often what we do is we'll read a, we read scripture, uh, we say amen to what we read, we're encouraged by what we read, but the Lord has actually given us instruction that in, in many ways determines the measure of our success, our impact, our prosperity. And again, I don't mind talking about money in this context, but it's not my focus today at all. It's, it's not about, you know, boats and planes and mansions. It's about being as wealthy as Bill Gates is on the outside, you and me being that wealthy on the inside. Is that there's that kind of an abundance here that I have to, I have to spend my life trying to figure out how to give all this encouragement away because I've got so much. It's that place of prosperity. Is it possible that God would bless you more on the inside than somebody like a Bill Gates or some of these others are blessed on the outside? Yes, it's possible because we tap into an eternal unlimited kingdom. And it is the design of the Lord that we actually enter into places of personal victory that are equal to the kinds of victories that we see uh, by great corporations, etc. All right? So back to the point is that the Lord would cause you and me to be a people that have triumphed in our personal journey with the Lord to such an extent that there are conquests in the same way that there'd be conquest in military, conquest in business, conquest in, in other parts of life, uh, sports, etc. Instead, what he's saying is he's directly, directly tying it to this one tiny little sliver of insight and command, and that is to meditate. Even where he says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, that's actually one of the expressions of meditation. It is the fact that there, there is just, a, I'm not saying you have to rock, but I, but I want to illustrate. It's the fact that there is this repeating, God spoke a word to me. Let's just take, I remember times I've been in real a difficult uh, place financially and I needed a miracle breakthrough. And I found this verse in uh, Psalms 127. In fact, for months now, I've been reading Psalms 127 to 128 every day because they are family psalms, and I love to pray them over my household. So let's go back to this verse. So he says, he, he provides for his beloved even while he sleeps. So I will take this verse in a time of personal, great personal need, and, I'll, and I will just pray and say, God, you said in your word that you provide for me even while I'm sleeping. God, I celebrate the fact that I, I do work hard for you and I give that to you, but your work for me is far greater than my work for myself. You have unlimited resources. You have unlimited resources. You provide for me out of the riches of your glory, which is vast and uncontainable in any vessel. God, I thank you that your abundance pours towards me, that you've actually assigned a measure of breakthrough into my life, my family, and my family line. God, I confess, I declare, I sing before you. You provide for me even while I sleep. What is there? There's just this repeated prayer. It's not just this ritual or this religious routine. What's happening is my interaction with what God has said is now becoming a part of the fabric of my being. Lance Wall now would say it's become cellular in us. It's, it, it, it becomes a, uh, something that is so much a part of us that, that it is woven into our actual personality and it affects how we think, it affects how we live. It's not a two-minute reciting of a verse. It's a lifetime of engagement with that which God has said. 